Glad to know you're still with us and still continuing in the conversation for today. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, held a Treasury Bills That T Bills primary market auction on the 9th of November 2022. At a primary market auction, also known as PMA, existing T-bills totaling 193.03 billion naira, that is 1.15 billion naira, 2.83 billion naira, and 189.06 billion naira across the 91-day, 182-day, and 364-day instruments, respectively, will mature and be rolled over. CBN caught the top rate of the 364-day Treasury bill by 0.51% at a primary market. According to industry data, the CBN auctioned 139.1 billion naira worth of the one-year instrument, but received 499.4 billion naira worth of bids and allotted 300.2 billion naira at 13.99%, lower than the 14.50% of the previous exercise. But Mr. Ajayi, if you can hear me, like I said earlier, we are joined by Oladipo Ajayi, the head fixed income, Chapel Hill, Denham. If you can hear me, uh, before you talk to us about what happened, uh, to this particular bill. I'd like you to just give us a quick overview of activities in the fixed income market this week. Hey, thank you very much for having me uh, this afternoon. Um, on the Treasury B auction last week, um, the result came out as expected, um, though um, in, the, uh, in the last auction, it actually closed, the one year paper closed around for, uh, at 14.5. But um, the auction this week closed around 13.99. And um, one of the reasons why we saw that is. Mr. Adebo, if I get it correctly, you're talking about how that uh, this week it closed at 13.9, and you're trying to tell us the reason, or you, you're trying to tell us why that happened. If you can hear me, do go ahead, please. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Like I said, um, one of the reasons why, why we saw um, drop in rates, in stop rates, was uh, as a result of the level of liquidity in the market. Um, the market opened with about $400 billion, um, at the end of the week. Okay. Uh, and the stop rate. Um, the All right. I, I think I, we might just have to... Uh talk about uh, maybe just uh, share your thought on that uh, very quickly before uh, we move on to something else can you still hear me uh, mr oladipo yeah i can hear you all right please go ahead if you can hear me okay yeah like i said um the level of liquidity Okay, so it says the level of liquidity in the market supported uh, the rates that it's closed with eventually Yes, um, looking at the auction, I mean, fixed income traders expected what um, the the bid, and of course, they, we are seeing that um, playing out for this week. And however, you can see that the rates came down, and of course, those who are played in that space are not the retail investors; these are institutional investors. But who will advise that? Um, yes, the TB rates has been there. The TB um, uh, as an asset in terms of um, investment has been there for the institutional investors but we are trying to encourage retail investors to get into that space because you need to diversify your portfolio All right. it is not only on equity 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 as a, a retail investor you need to also look at other asset uh, class and i think the tb space is also a very good space for retail investors to get into however the amount of money that's involved in that um, investment is quite huge. But of course, that's why the NGS has its own fixed income space where investors can begin to buy retail bond. And that's why we have the federal government savings bond. Of course, they've also done their own um, auction. And of course, so investors can look at uh, those options and um, invest in that um, area too. All right. Well, um, we, are, we still have with us um, Oladipo Ajayi. Oladipo Ajayi, if you can hear us, I'd like you to go ahead with your analysis. Yeah, um, like I mentioned earlier on, the level of liquidity is one of the reasons why we saw the rates at that level. And um, if you notice that um, the CBN issued one offered uh, 103 billion across three maturities, and uh, the 91 days, 182 days, and uh, 364 days, but where we saw that huge 
age uh, demand is on the um, 364-day paper. And um, the CBN offered $139 billion, uh, but the subscription we saw is about close to about $500 billion. And that's one of the reasons why they actually sold above what was offered. Um, they actually sold, uh, allotted about, uh, about $300 billion on that maturity. Mm -hmm. So meaning that uh, if they decide to actually stay by what was offered, they would have seen the rate close around 13 half which is like 100 basis point from where it closed in the last auction. So if you look at that um, and uh, what is currently happening in the market and look at where overnight and OBB rates is currently, uh, the rates currently at around 8 points, even close to the week, around 8.5. So it tells you that the level of liquidity system is one of the catalysts that led to the result we saw. And if you look at also on, on the bond market as well, um, despite the fact that um, auction is on, on Monday, uh, we saw a bit of demand across maturity this week, uh, most especially um, on, on the long dated instrument. Um, there are demands on the 37, the 42, the 49, the 50 uh, year, uh, 2050 maturities. So um, we think that the level of the uh, level of liquidity in the system is one of the reasons why we saw that level of activity in the market. And uh, despite the level of liquidity, CDM only did OMO of just 20 billion. And um, that's also a signal that uh, the CBN supports the level of liquidity in the market. All right. Thank you so much for your thoughts on that one. Well, just before we go, uh, Victoria, can you hear me? All right, uh, moving on now, as much as we preach to everyone to invest, we know the act itself is not as straightforward as we sometimes make it seem. And when it comes to investing in the stock market, a famous quote by Judge Soros comes to mind, which reads, it's not whether you're right or wrong that's important, but how much money you make when you're right and how much you lose when you're wrong. But on the show today, uh, my analyst will be sharing some important things to consider before investing in the stock market. And I I'd like to start with you, Oladipo. You know, talk to us about time horizon. Like, how important is time when considering a stock? Yeah, when well, you're actually investing in, uh, in the stock market, it's not only peculiar to stock markets. There are key things that you need to understand when an investor actually wants to invest. Uh, that you need to know about your risk return uh, objective. You need to know uh, about your uh, time horizon. Time horizon is how long do I want to stay in this uh, investment? Um, what we've noticed most time is that a lot of people have short time horizon, but yet they want to they, they will invest in a, an investment that will not bring uh, return anytime soon. And as a result of that, when they are pressed for liquidity, they ended up going on to actually liquidate in this, in, in the investment. They've been taking a huge loss at that particular point in time. So they will come back and say, well, the uh, I, I made a bad call or the investment is not something you need to put your money in. Uh, the key thing is that when you're investing, you need to understand how long do I want to stay in this investment? What is the horizon? If, if you, your investment horizon is within uh, 364 days, it means that at times you cannot put your money in investment that you know that before you can start seeing it, Okay, I think uh, he, he, he did a great job there trying to break it down, you know, how about we have yeah. the long term, we have the short term, we have the mid term. So you need to be sure of what you want really before you go into uh, some of those things. I'd like you uh, to talk to us about some other things to consider really. Yes, um, when you are investing, let me say particularly in the capital market, okay. yes, you have several asset class in the capital market. It's not only equity or stock as the case may be. You also have what they call ETFs, that is exchange traded funds. You also have even the mutual funds yeah. are there. You also have even real estate investment trusts. But there are certain basic things that every investor has to consider. And of course, as the trader or the stockbroker investment advisor, you have to really do what I call an assessment of your clients. It's not one size fits investment for everybody. You have somebody who can take some level of risks. Like, of course, somebody who is retired, he has just got his retirement uh, benefits, and you are telling that person to come and invest in equity. Of course, I would not encourage that. Because at that point, the person is looking for fixed income. That is, they want to be sure. So if they go into investing in fixed income, you know, that is maybe bond, 
they are sure that I'm going to get 10%, 20%, 15% from this my investment. Now, compare to a young chap who is just out of the university, just got a job. Of course, maybe it's about 25, 26. He can take some level of risks. Yes, then I can say, okay, on your portfolio, you need to have equity. Because the return from equity is variable. You cannot say this is what you are going to get, get the return. But again, after looking at the returns, the risks that that investor can take is also very key. Your risk is um, appetite. Somebody have also said that <laughs> if you want to invest in the equities markets, it is funds that you know you can do without. Exactly. But we have seen people who want to use their school fees to invest in the, say maybe the school is going to resume. Maybe in the next six months. Maybe it's a Maybe. short term. <laughs> yeah, they want to just get in. A, but we are saying that is not advisable. Okay. You know, it's funds that you know you can do without that you invest in the stock market. Another thing again that you need to look at is the safety. 